You've outlined your thesis. Walk us through the mechanics of how this abolishment, this transition will happen and what new form the Federal Reserve can take. Yeah, so, so uh, the, the chain of events started actually in 1977 with the, the dual mandate. So as soon as the Fed got put in the position of having to monitor unemployment plus inflation, that was the beginning of the end for the Federal Reserve. The reason it was is because basically, if you want to keep unemployment low at all times, which is what the Fed wants to do, you have to constantly stimulate the, the economy, right? By printing money, printing money and keeping interest rates low. Well, you can't be the parent that spoils the child and then also be the one that's hard nosed and says, well, we're going to raise interest rates because inflation is getting out of control. You can't do that. And that was the beginning of the chain reaction that I'll talk about in the presentation. After the collapse, you'll see a new body come up that'll be in charge of the digital currency, whatever it may be. And eventually you'll see this digital currency probably being used all over the world, even as the reserve currency. I did notice that during recessions, you're right. I did notice that during a recessionary period, the dual mandates seem to contradict each other. Yeah. If you want, if the Federal Reserve wants to lower the unemployment rate, they have to keep monetary policy dovish, which in itself is inflationary. Right. So if you've already got inflation above their 2% target, which is currently what's happening right now, they can't keep stimulating the economy to bring unemployment down because they're gonna be counteracting their own inflationary mandate. What, what options do they have now? <laughs> oh man, I mean, taking away the, the dual mandate. I mean, so so I've, I've always been a big Which, believer. Which by the way is, only, is unique to only a few central banks. I believe the Federal Reserve being one of them, the ECB only has one mandate. I think. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, that's very, very true. But I think I think the bottom line is, is you'll see something emerge that'll be a, a body that monitors the digital currency, but it'll be strict in terms of its expansion, right? And I also think that the people will demand that the government eventually has a balanced budget and that can't just run endless debt up. And this 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 crazy, you know, monetary theory as as they call it, you know, um, it's, it's just this, this concept that the government is now run by that you can just print unlimited amounts because there's no repercussions. And that is absolutely not the case. I mean, even someone who runs their own household can tell you that eventually that, that check is gonna run out. So to your point that the Federal Reserve is gonna be abolished, I'm just making the argument that that would be a difficult thing to do because there are certain powerful actors within the government who would probably wouldn't want the Federal Reserve or any monetary body to just disappear, at least not in its current form. Yes, but what I'm actually calling for is a total collapse of the monetary system, actually. Wow, okay. So it's not, I mean, there will have to be a reset. And I do think that what we're going to go through as a country, as a world, is something that's going to equal, if not be worse, than 1929 and the 30s of the Great Depression. It is going to be cataclysmic. But from its dust, Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies will rise and be the future of society. Well, what's going to be the trigger for this collapse? Oh, man. I mean, I think the triggers have already been put in place with the, just the printing of endless money. I mean, think about how every Everyone's now saying the U.S. could just, you know, how do we pay off, you know, almost 30 trillion in debt? Print more money, print more money, you know, keep interest rates low. We know that every time there's a crisis in the world, whether it's COVID, whether it's a recession, what does the Fed do? Pumps more money, more QE. I mean, think about after 2009, the Fed came in with quantitative easing. You thought that was going to end after a few years. It didn't. And now we have COVID and it's even more. And now the Fed's talking about it again. Watch, you'll see some sort of new crisis emerge and the Fed will, will cut back on the QE a little bit and then re-up it as soon as the markets start to throw a hissy fit. But why would that cause the monetary system to collapse? Well, it could, because eventually you have so many dollars out there that you're going to have, you're going to eventually have yields on the bonds spike higher regardless of the Fed. And you're going to have some sort of system that just is is doomed to, to collapse. And I'm, it's, it's hard to denote ex the exact chain reaction or specifics, but you can just see the writing on the wall at this point. It is not a pretty situation. So what, what, is it, what is this collapsed monetary system going to look like in its final form? I think the dollar is going to eventually collapse. I think a lot of the main currencies of the world will decline. I think inflation is going to not go down back to 2%. You're going to see inflation run hot for at least a decade going into this. And eventually you're going to have the people just rising up, not necessarily in a violent way, but just demanding some sort of change that you can't just constantly print money, that you can't just run up debt endlessly because eventually that that just eats away at our own buying power. Just in the dollar collapsing, you're right. If inflation does go up dramatically, where even if it maintains its current pace, the dollar will lose value vis-a-vis -vis domestic goods. But what about the dollar losing value or perhaps gaining value vis-a-vis -vis other currencies? Do you think other currencies would depreciate 
at the same pace as the dollar or perhaps depreciate even faster? I think I think about the same pace, yeah. And the thing is, if you look at central banks around the world, whether it's Japan or even Europe or, or other central banks, they're doing the same thing. They're taking their cues from the Federal Reserve and pumping equal amounts of money into their system. And so you're going to have this situation where actually cryptocurrency is a huge winner here longer term, as well as, in my opinion, gold and other commodities. Okay, so what's going to happen after this collapse? We The dust settles, we have this Mad Max scenario in the monetary system. What does Bitcoin look like? What does gold look like? Gold is easily north of 5,000 at that point, and crypto, uh, you know, you'll see Bitcoin well north of 500,000.